In this video, we're gonna go over the easiest and most prolific vegetables to grow on your keto weight loss journey, and we're gonna show you a really easy recipe with zucchini coming up. Sarah and I are relatively new to gardening, but that hasn't stopped us from enjoying fresh veggies all summer long, even from our tiny city backyards. Gardening has so many health benefits. Not only are you ensuring what is actually in your vegetables, but you can also grow unique varieties that you can't even find at your local grocery store. Plus, it's a great way to get out there and get some exercise, and if you know us, uh, Gardening is probably the only way that we actually do get any exercise. So once the weather starts getting nice, Sarah and I are usually the first people at the garden center. And we usually go there between 10 and 20 times a growing season. We recently went to the garden center for the first time to pick up our keto veggies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our favorite varieties of vegetables. And this is because they are prolific and they are easy to grow. This means that any of you can grow them, even if you have a balcony or a little tiny uh, garden bed. Sarah has a couple raised beds in her backyard and she was able to produce so many vegetables, it was amazing. So there are a lot of you out there that might not have even a balcony or any outdoor space where you can plant things. There are solutions for you, such as growing stuff in a sunny windowsill inside. And there's some great indoor growing solutions, um, lighting setups. They come with little plugs with seeds in them. We will link a grow system in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. So the first thing that we always suggest that you grow yourself are herbs. One organic bunch of dill costs about $2.50 around here. And we go through a lot of dill during the summer. It's just such a great ingredient to make sauces and marinades and all of that. So I always suggest to grow a couple plants for yourself. Grow a couple plants so that you can have a bountiful harvest all summer long. The only thing that I would say though, if you are new to growing dill, is that the Eastern Swallowtail Butterfly loves dill. If they find it, they will eat it. So that's why I usually grow grow two plants and I'll cover one with like a protective cloche. I'll let the caterpillars eat the dill and because I feel like bad taking all the dill for myself. So I grow two plants usually. Rosemary is an amazing plant to grow. I usually buy a pretty large pot of it from Home Depot. It's about $7.99 or something like that, but it's a huge plant. And by the end of the year, it usually turns into a bush about this big. I'll be cutting on it all summer and then around October, I will chop it all the way to the ground and I'll dry it and I'll put it in the food processor and I'll put it in a little glass jar. I'll have rosemary all throughout the winter. So this basil plant is called Amazel Basil by Proven Winners. It's an amazing, vigorous growing basil. It's powdery mildew resistant and this thing will turn into literally a tree, a tree <laughs> by the end of the year. They're very fragrant leaves. Um, they're a little bit peppery, I would say. There are different types of basil that you can buy, ones that are more sweet or purple or whatever. A lot of those suffer from powdery mildew at which this plant is not. I like to plant this one up and I will pick off a couple leaves and put them in salads, marinades, pizza. pizza. So this plant will just produce all season long and then it will die relatively quickly after the frost takes it. It's definitely worth it. I love this plant. It says it will get uh, 36 inches tall, yep. but it will probably get 36 inches wide as well. So that's three feet tall and three feet wide for just one plant of basil. I also actually use this for cut flower arrangements too, and it makes the house smell wonderful, and then it will actually root in the vase. So if you're looking for a filler for a cut flower arrangement and eating, this is a great option too, because it's just an amazingly vigorous grower. So next up on our list is a cilantro. Cilantro is a cold weather type of plant, unfortunately. So when um, it gets warm out, it's not gonna survive. You probably will have to like seed new plants in order to have this all summer long. It's gonna suffer immediately when it starts getting hot out. So like really hot. This one is kind of like, I just like having it on hand because you know, when we make tacos or I make cauliflower rice, I like to just use a little bit of cilantro. And I feel like when I buy it from the store, it's almost already on its way out. Yeah. And so like, I'll take some cilantro leaves off of the stuff that I buy from the store. And then the next day it's like wilted and slimy and gross. So having a fresh plant where I can just take what I need off of it is really helpful. So there's so many varieties of vegetables that you can grow. There's only a couple that we would like say that is a must when you're on keto. And the first one would be tomatoes. You can choose a smaller variety of tomato. Like there are even tomatoes, like the tumbling tom variety, I think it's called, that will grow well in a basket or even a window box. They're very small tomatoes and they don't grow like crazy. You know, if you have a garden bed um, outside and you want to grow like the indeterminate variety, which is a variety that like never stops growing, like it will just keep on going forever. I'm telling you, there is nothing like a homegrown tomato. Tomatoes are actually one of like the longest things to actually mature, mature and ripen. I think it's like a hundred and something days, but there is a reason why people grow tomatoes and they're obsessed with tomatoes. It's because the difference is night and day. Okay, so next up on my 
list of things that you have to grow in your keto garden are cucumbers. I absolutely love cucumbers. They're something that I really didn't have a taste no. for until last year when I grew one and ate one myself. So here I have the Burpless Supreme, which is a like less thorny type of cucumber. I like to grow these in a grow box because they are water hungry plants. And if you don't water them every day, they are going to die. So we have this system, it's called a grow box. It's a plastic container, which you fill with soil at the top. And at the bottom, it has a reservoir where you fill it. You don't have to water them every day. All right. In the beginning, you should, because the roots are not gonna be long enough in order to reach the reservoir. So for the first week, you should just stay on top of all of your newly planted plants, just because they're young and they don't have the root system. But after that point, you only have to water them like once a week and make yeah. sure the reservoir is full and that's it. And I can expect a cucumber in 50 five days so i'm excited i love having cucumbers just to like dip they're just a delicious neutral snack actually you can make a cucumber taste like a watermelon by dipping it in sweetener and eating it um we actually tried that on this channel and we were surprised that it actually does taste like watermelon when you put sweetener on it so you could try that too so zucchini was actually my favorite thing <laughs> that we grew the last couple years just because um if you have one plant you can feed your family and you have two plants you can feed the city of chicago with uh, that many plants and you will be uh, throwing zucchini at people that walk by your house because you just have so many of the them. The more you pick them, the more the pieces. Yeah. And if you forget that you have zucchini, you'll get one about the size of a baseball bat <laughs> after a couple days. So you have to keep on top of it, but they are relatively easy to grow and they are very prolific. And you know, on keto, you can use zucchini for so many different things. I've heard of people even making like boats, like they oh, like yeah. scrape it out and then they put like a filling on the inside. You can use zucchini if you slice it thin, you can make like lasagna with it with zucchini in the middle. Learning to garden can be intimidating, just like learning anything new. But it doesn't have to be. That's why we're happy to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare has thousands of classes that you can take part in, whether it's cooking, to gardening, art, interior design, knitting, crafting, and so much more. One of the classes that Sarah and I are currently taking is called Gardening 101 a guide for growing and caring for plants. Taught by Geraldine Levin. We absolutely love this class because it teaches you the fundamentals of growing herbs and plants. And it's in an easy to understand format. So while Emily and I do have some experience gardening, we were always intimidated by the process of propagating plants. But after this class, we're confident that we can turn one plant into many, saving us money and allowing us to garden even more. And remember that Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. And they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow where your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now we're gonna show you a recipe with zucchini. So since zucchini are so prolific, there are so many ways that you can use them. Um, we actually bought these from the grocery store and we're gonna show you one of our favorite recipes, which are zucchini fritters. And I feel like they're the perfect side dish for like a grilling session or just a normal meal, just having them on the side. And we're gonna make a really delicious dipping sauce to go along with it. So in my bowl, I have four large zucchini and we are going to shred them using a grater. So be careful because when you get down to like the nub, maybe just throw it out because there are plenty of times I've scraped my knuckles against the grater and it's just not not a good feeling, let me tell you. Okay, so our zucchini is nicely shredded in a bowl and we're gonna take a dish towel, a clean one of course, and we're gonna take the zucchini and we're gonna wring out all the extra moisture because zucchinis are almost 90% water and they're not gonna become nice and crispy like we want in a fritter. Okay, now we're ready to add in our ingredients. I'm gonna go in with one tablespoon of garlic powder, salt and pepper to taste, depending on how much you like, a half a cup of almond flour, and one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. If you don't have shredded mozzarella, you could also put in Parmesan. And we're also going to combine everything and add in two lightly beaten eggs. Okay, so our ingredients are nice and incorporated. We're just gonna go ahead and fry up our fritters in a little bit of avocado oil. All right, so while those zucchini fritters are getting nice and golden brown in the pan, we're gonna get started on our sauce. It's really simple. I'm gonna go in with one cup of sour cream, one tablespoon of garlic, two tablespoons of lemon juice, salt and pepper to taste, and a whole bunch of dill. I forgot, we're gonna be adding in a tablespoon of horseradish sauce. It is spicy, so if you don't like this, you can leave this one out. Okay, so I'm getting ready to try these now. I've actually never had these before. Um, Sarah's never made them for me, so I'm interested to try them. They kind of look like hash browns, which really excites me because I love hash browns. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the sauce. I love dill. And half sauce, half fritter. You know what I mean? 
I like it. Very good. I would make these. This fritter actually surprises me a bit because it does give me that hash brownie feeling. So I hope that this video has inspired you guys to get out there and grow something keto friendly this summer. Why don't you tell us what you're growing in your gardens in the comments section. We are always wanting to try new varieties. And don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, by clicking the link below because you get a free trial membership of the premium subscription. Anyways, I'm Emily and Sarah's behind the camera and we are the Keto Twins signing out. Would you like some fritter with that sauce?